the Thracians, a captivating and enigmatic people who once inhabited the Balkans. Viewed as barbaric by the Greeks and Romans, the Thracians had a fascinating history that continues to intrigue many to this day. Join us as we explore the complete history of the Thracian civilization from their mysterious origin to their encounters with mighty empires. Unfortunately, the early history of the Thracian people remains shrouded in mystery due to limited information about their lineage and the scarcity of deciphered inscriptions created by them. However, we gain valuable insights into the culture and character of the Thracians from accounts by the Greeks and Romans, as well as archaeological evidence. The Greeks and the Romans often depicted the Thracians as warlike and barbarian people, but admired them for their prowess in battle. According to Greek mythology, Thrax, the first Thracian, was directly descended from Ares, the Greek god of war. This lineage was the Greeks' way of explaining why the Thracians had a natural inclination towards warfare and possessed exceptional military ability. While ancient sources describe them as having physical characteristics similar to the Celts and Germans, the Thracians depicted themselves differently in their own artwork, showcasing a more Mediterranean appearance. They were known for their tribal nature, residing in sparsely populated villages rather than urbanized settlements. It is difficult to establish the exact emergence of the Thracians as a distinct group of people. According to many modern historians, they began to form around 1500 BC, after several waves of Indo-European migrators mixed with the indigenous populations of the Balkans. By the 8th century BC, the Thracians had emerged as a separate group and were interacting with the Greeks, as evidenced by their mention in Homer's Iliad as allies of the Trojans. During the Archaic period, the Thracians interacted with the Greeks and conducted raids into Anatolia and Greece. They even established some small colonies of their own in these regions. By far the largest Thracian invasion of Anatolia was led by King Kobos, who went as far as the city of Sardis, before being eventually driven out by the Scythians. In the 6th century BC, the region of Thrace was conquered by King Darius of Persia during his campaign against the Scythians, with most of the 200 Thracian tribes coming under the domain of the Achaemenids. After establishing the satrapy of Scudra, many Thracians served in the Achaemenid army under King Darius. During the Greco-Persian Wars, many Thracian tribes sided with the Persians, considering them more favorable than the Greeks. However, the Achaemenids faced opposition from the Breges when the Persian army crossed into Europe during the first Persian invasion of Greece. The Breges ambushed the Persian army under General Mardonius, but were swiftly defeated, allowing the Persians to continue their campaign. Following the eventual defeat of the Persians, after the second Persian invasion of Greece, the Achaemenid hold on the region weakened, creating a power vacuum. Teres I of the Idrissi exploited the situation and established the Idrissian kingdom, marking the first unified Thracian state. Under the reign of the Idrissian kings, Thracian culture prospered. They adopted Greek customs and fashions, including the Greek alphabet as their official script, and Greek became the language spoken among the nobility. It was during this period that many surviving Thracian artifacts and archaeological sites were created, such as the renowned Panagurista treasure, many Thracian tombs, and numerous pieces of jewelry and art. Despite adopting Greek influences, the Thracians still maintained their tribal way of life and warlike aspects of their culture. The Idrissian kingdom came to an end when the region was conquered by Philip II of Macedon, transforming Thrace into a Macedonian vassal state. Following the death of Alexander the Great and the collapse of his empire, Thrace became a battleground for local Thracian leaders and Diadochi generals who vied for control over the region for many decades. The migration of Celtic tribes through the area further fueled its instability. Thrace eventually came under Roman control after the Roman-Macedonian Wars in the 2nd century BC. Initially, many Thracian tribes fought alongside the Macedonians against Rome. However, as Rome emerged victorious, it sought to turn Thrace into a client state. Over time, more and more tribes accepted Roman rule, though the region remained tumultuous. The various pro- and anti-Roman factions seized control of the area, with the Romans becoming deeply involved in local politics. Finally, in 46 AD, Thrace was permanently incorporated as a Roman province after a major Thracian revolt was crushed by Emperor Claudius. 
During this period, many Thracians served in the Roman army as auxiliaries and were particularly renowned for their skilled light cavalry. The Thracians were generally admired by the Romans for their martial nature, and Thracian gladiators achieved great success, further enhancing their reputation as formidable warriors. With Thrace now part of the Roman Empire, Roman influence continued to grow. Locals adopted Latin and Greek as their primary languages, embraced Roman culture and identified themselves as Romans. By the 4th century AD, the local Thracian and Roman cultures had effectively merged into one. Many influential figures in late antiquity such as Emperor Justinian I, legendary Roman generals Belisarius and Flavius Aetius, and the historian Priscus the Thracian possibly had Thraco-Roman roots. During the migration period, Thrace became one of the most dangerous and volatile regions of the Eastern Roman Empire. It faced invasions by various barbarian tribes. First, the Visigoths, a Germanic tribe, raided the region during the 4th century AD. Their invasion culminated in the Battle of Adrianople in 378, where they emerged victorious. They were allowed to settle in the region temporarily before departing west shortly after. Subsequently, the region became a target of constant raids by the Huns, who at this point had emerged as the biggest enemy of the Romans. The Hunnic leader Attila launched a full-scale invasion into Thrace in 447 AD, plundering and ravaging the area. After Attila's death and the fall of the Hunnic Empire, Emperor Justinian I attempted to restore the region and repair the damage inflicted by the Huns, but these efforts were largely unsuccessful. Additionally, the Justinian Plague further decimated the population. Following the Huns, the region faced raids from the Slavs starting in the late 5th century AD with continued incursions throughout the 500s. By the mid-6th century, the Slavs had crossed the Danube and settled in Thrace in significant numbers. The Roman rule over the province of Thrace finally came to an end in the latter half of the 7th century, when the Bulgars, led by King Asperu, in an alliance with the local Slavic tribes, defended the Roman Emperor Constantine IV in the Battle of Ongo. This victory forced the Emperor to cede his territories north of the Balkan Mountains and officially recognized Bulgaria as an independent state. For a long time, it was believed that the Thracians were effectively driven to extinction during the migration period. The constant invasions and raids forced them to isolate themselves further and further into the mountains. However, more recent theories suggest that a group of Thracians, particularly the Bessi tribe, inhabiting the Rhodope Mountains, maintained their Thracian identity and language well into the Middle Ages. Furthermore, genetic studies on modern Bulgarians have indicated that the Thracians played a significant role in the Bulgarian ethnogenesis, contradicting previous views that modern Bulgarians were predominantly Slavic genetically. Some Bulgarian historians have even proposed theories connecting the Bulgars to the Thracians, some even going as far as suggesting that the Bulgars were an extension of the Thracian people. However, these are theories that we may explore in future videos. In conclusion, the Thracians, despite being labeled as barbarians, have left an indelible mark on the Balkans' cultural and genetic landscape. Their captivating history, from interacting with the Greeks in the Archaic period to the prosperous Idrissian kingdom, showcases their adaptability and resilience. The enduring legacy of the Thracians can be witnessed through the remarkable artifacts and archaeological sites that testify to their vibrant civilization. Today, the spirit of the Thracians lives on in the region's cultural traditions, folklore, and through the modern Bulgarians, who share a significant portion of their genetic heritage with the ancient Thracians. Thank you for watching this video about the history of the Thracian people. For more content like this, like the video and subscribe to our channel.